Hey there, welcome to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll discuss why pepper plant leaves curl. So curling leaves, also known as leaf roll, is a very common issue in pepper plants, especially young indoor pepper plants. And today I'm just gonna go through all of the possible causes, how you can identify what's causing it, and also how you can solve the problem. So I have several live examples of pepper plants behind me. I have been selectively stressing the plants to show you what each condition looks like and how to spot uh, the issue, depending on what might be causing it. All of these seedlings were planted at the same time under the same conditions, and then they were moved to different conditions to illustrate what happens under different stressful conditions. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. So I'll start with the most common cause of pepper plant leaf curl, and that is overwatering. This plant here, I have been just drowning with water, watering it every single day, keeping it bottom watered in this small container. And as you can see, it is showing signs of leaf curl. The leaves sort of look mottled, they sort of look misshapen, almost bubbly, and that's because they're just receiving too much water, the root system is drowning, and the plant is stressed out. And one of the ways that overwatering will present its stress is through curling leaves. So how do you solve this issue? Of course, you stop overwatering and you pay attention to when your plants actually need water. Uh, younger plants are a little bit tricky. You know, I like to bottom water, which means, you know, just pour water beneath the plants and allow the soil to absorb the water from below. That helps you avoid disturbing the young plants. It's also important to get rid of the excess water that's sitting uh, in your seed cell trays. So after the soil has absorbed the necessary water, you know, make a point to get rid of that excess water so that they don't have too much water. For more established potted plants or in-ground plants, I recommend digging down just a couple inches into the soil and checking for moisture. If there's any moisture, hold off watering for another day and check again tomorrow. Learn more about overwatering over at Pepper Geek. We have an article all about watering peppers and how often to do it and how to know when your plants truly need water. Overwatering is by far the most common issue that new growers have with their pepper plants. Okay, so moving on to another cause of curling pepper leaves and that is intense light or too much light. These cayenne pepper seedlings were kept about six or eight inches from our intense LED light, which is far too close. Uh, it's gonna depend on the intensity of your light, but our, our light is a 100 watt light, so six inches is a little too close. It should be more like 12 to 15 inches. So as you can see, these leaves have more of a rolled look to them. They're sort of rolling inwards, and that's just a natural protective response from the plant. The leaves are essentially curling inwards so that they don't receive as much light. Uh, they won't photosynthesize as much, and that's basically just a Way for the plant to protect itself. Unfortunately, rolled leaves like that will not uncurl even after you've uh, removed them from the intense light, but future growth will be improved. So the simple solution, especially for indoor plants, is to just raise your light up or lower your plants down away from the light. Now that's for indoor plants. If your outdoor plants seem to be getting too much sunlight, the issue could be improper hardening off. Hardening off is essentially the process of moving your plants outdoors and transitioning them from indoor grow lights to full sun outdoors. No matter how powerful your indoor grow light may be, outdoor sunlight is a totally different story, so you have to transition your plants outside gradually, starting them off with just a few minutes of direct sunlight and gradually increasing over time until they can handle full sun. If you try to rush this process, curling leaves will definitely happen. You'll also see sun scald and other issues, so you know, take it slow, just start whenever the weather starts to warm up and gradually increase outdoors time until they're ready. Now this third example is sort of just a normal plant. You can see they're kind of leggy. They were kept a little too far away from the lights. And sometimes you'll see the leaves sort of reaching up, sort of like, like that. They're not really curling, but you'll see them sort of reaching for the light, trying to get more of the light. You'll see that happen if you're trying to use a window, for instance. A lot of people just try to grow their seedlings in a sunny window. And I always recommend, you know, that's really not enough light. You should get a small grow light at the very minimum. Moving on to another example here, this plant is suffering from plant edema, which is a water retention issue. Essentially, the plant is taking up more water than it can use or transpire through the leaves. And the easy way to tell if you have edema is you'll see this sort of crystallized look underneath the leaves, sort of looks like little whitish dots and they give a crystallized sort of look to them. So the cause of this is stuffy conditions. So it's very common in young indoor plants where there's not very good airflow, uh, there's not very good air circulation. So this plant variety is very susceptible to it. Uh, it grows very bushy and thick foliage. 
and so there's not very good air circulation throughout the plant, and so it's got edema. Of course, I wouldn't be talking about edema if it didn't cause leaf curling, and as you can see, it sort of resembles overwatering, but it's a little bit different. It's sort of curling up at the edges of the leaves and sort of causing misshapen leaves as well. So if your plants do have edema, try introducing a fan, anything to better circulate the air and introduce fresh air on a regular basis. We have a fan inside our grow tent blowing on all of our pepper plants. We also have an intake fan at the bottom of the grow tent bringing in fresh air from outside of the tent. And even all this isn't enough, but they're running 24 seven. And if we didn't have them, I guarantee you conditions would be worse. Another possible cause for curling leaves is a root bound plant. Now this is our pepper in a can. This is just a fun experiment we ran over the winter. But as you can see, this container is much too small for a pepper plant. This huge stalk should be in a five gallon pot or larger. And so it's being constrained inside of this can. And what happens is the plant becomes root bound. And what that means is the root system outgrows the container in which it's planted and the root system basically becomes entangled. Now what goes on below the surface of the soil affects what you see above the surface and sometimes a root bound plant will present its stresses through curling leaves. And this plant has some curling leaves. It's otherwise healthy. It already produced a pepper and it's gonna produce more, I hope, but you may see some curling if you are constraining your plants to a container that's too small. So the solution, of course, is to upsize your pots. You should always be transitioning your plants into larger pots when they're ready, until they're ready to go outside into their final location. Another possible cause of curling leaves is a calcium deficiency. Calcium is required for plants to produce healthy cell walls, and if there's not enough calcium available or the plant is having difficulty using calcium, you may start to see misshapen or curled leaves. This is also the main cause of blossom end rot, uh, that commonly affects tomatoes and peppers. And the solution is essentially to supplement with calcium. One thing we like to use is bone meal. It's full of calcium. It's a natural organic source of calcium and you can amend it into your soil at the beginning of the year, both in potted plants or in the ground. You can also use seabird guano, which is a natural source of phosphorus and calcium, and you can amend it into the soil or you can use a water solution. You can then apply it when you're watering or you can apply it as a foliar spray onto the leaves of your pepper plants. And the last thing I wanna mention is disease. There are many different diseases that can affect pepper plants, unfortunately. I don't wanna really go into detail on diseases here, but I'll leave a link down below to our article about pepper plant diseases and how you can identify if you have a disease. If you do think that you have a disease, the only solution usually is to remove the plant and destroy it. It's a sad day if you have a diseased pepper plant, but it's always for the best to avoid contamination of your other plants. For more updates on our pepper growing experiments like this one, check us out on Instagram over at PepperGeek, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching Pepper Geek, and I'll see you next time.